<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Writing with Dice podcast, the podcast where we write an outline to an original movie every week using our custom dice game. As always, I'm Colin, and with me is my main man, Liberty. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I think I'm ready to make uh, another chapter in the Writing with Dice um not cinematic universe because not all the movies are tied. <laughs> not all. Some of them are. Some some of them are t- some of them are tied together. Some of them we're, we're trying to create a universe with them, but not all of them, thankfully. Too many of them are tied together, actually. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that, more that's, than we, <laughs> we we've gotten out a couple times now, and hopefully we don't get it again. Mm-hmm. So I am ready to hop right in. How about you? Uh, I think we are. If you don't know the rules, go watch first episode. If you do know the rules, let's hop yeah. into it. First yes. thing first, we are going to roll a d6. To see if we're gonna get our genre now or late. All right, rolling B six. We got a five. So that means five. If odd, complete step two after step eight. All right, we don't know our genre. We don't know what kind of genre we're gonna make. Shit. Okay, this is one of the things that we gotta get off the start. That's gonna completely fuck with us. It's gonna completely Mm -hmm. ruin us. But so we gotta make this whole ass movie and not know what type of movie it is. Much how. Like, um, famous director Quentin Tarantino makes his movies. It's, it's absolute. I, I would actually believe that he does that. I don't know if you, I, think was, I don't even know if you were making a joke there or saying an actual fact because I would believe it if you Here's said the thing. It was a joke, but it could be true. <laughs> Who knows? That's true. We don't know his writing process, we don't know what he's like. <laughs> so, first thing first, then we're gonna go right to a uh, step three, then, which is a 1d20 for a wild card. So, we're already gonna start by fucking up our script. Great. That hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Great. So our first, our first D twenty, our first wild card is a four. What's a four? Four. If okay, Ooh. four is a complicated one here. We got to roll one D six. If it's one or two, the protagonist is in love with the antagonist. If it's three or four, the antagonist is in love with the protagonist. And if five or six, both are in love with each other. So we could end up having a lovers to enemies or enemies to lovers type story arc going here. If we get a five yes. or a six. And I don't know or what lover, you think. lovers to enemies to lovers. That's true. They could they could go back and forth. They could they could be they could be, you know what they could go enemies to lovers to enemies. They could like completely hate each other, then right in the middle of the script, just like they smash real quick. Ooh, they love each other, and then they kiss. go back to trying to kill each other. It's great. It's great. It'll <laughs> work. Alright, so so for that I gotta roll another D six. We got a D six, see what kind of trope we're dealing All right. with here. Alright, and we got a four. Ooh. So for the antagonist is love with the protagonist. Oh, that's that's gonna add some depth to our villains. So really... do we have do we have an evil simp? Is this already? <laughs> what is... Oh my god, he's the nice guy. <gasps> yes, we have we have an I, oh we have a nice guy. Oh, we can't we can't say the I word because that was apparently banned on Twitch. I don't know if anyone's gotten trouble for it, but we can't call them. <laughs> <laughs> short of involuntarily sell, but we can't call them that. But yeah, that, that's what, what they are if they're in love with the protagonist. The nice guy. So probably part of why they dislike the protagonist is because of the 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 lack of love coming from the protagonist, right? Yeah, they they gotta feel some kind of entitlement of like, hey, they should be with me. Fuck them. And they're trying to like <laughs> they're trying to ruin the protagonist's life. It, it could be a stalker. Mm. It could straight up be a stalker who feels entitled to the protagonist's love and attention and is, like, sabotaging their life to try to get them to be with them. Kind of reminds me of, um... Kind of two examples here. Have you seen the recent Invisible Man movie? I have. I have. That was a, that was really good. That was a really good movie. So, that love could be more obsession than love. Or we could go mega mind and just do the one Jonah Hill's character who's... <laughs> Just a nice guy who was like, "I'm a superhero now. Why won't you date me?" <laughs> Basically, I'm into it. We got a, we got a couple of good directions here. We got a couple of good directions we could go already. <laughs> okay, so now we got we got to start molding our characters. We got to roll a d6, and that'll decide if we yeah if we if we're molding our protagonist or antagonist first. Mm-hmm. So rolling d6, rolling a four. So, so that even, is even we got our protagonist. Yes, we got we, a protagonist. We get to build our protagonist. Sweet. So so immediately in love with the, with the um, antag or in love with the protagonist, the antagonist being. Um. I feel like I feel like we could really get anywhere with this. Like 
The thing is, I'm hoping we get positive trait more pos more like less like cruel and shit for the negative traits. But because sometimes I find with this game specifically, our protagonists just get molded to be like the worst people ever. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. That's true. We, we 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 should kind of balance that out a little bit. I feel like our the the traits are leaning a little negative. We'll, we'll keep that. We'll in do. Next I will, time. We'll go for protagonists. We'll go three po No, we'll go two positives and only one negative. For antagonists, we'll go two negatives, one positive. Okay, I can get with that. I can absolutely get with that. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to completely eliminate the negatives because characters need depth, even if it's forced depth, like we roll it. But it's still <laughs> depth. So. All right, I'm down for it. So the first positive trait our protagonist is gonna have. We gotta roll a d12. It is a mm -hmm. seven. What do we get? Persistent. Persistent. They're persi okay, that, uh, that that's always got fun to watch as a protagonist. Because they're a protagonist mm. who has a goal and they're constantly going for it. They're the, the first type of person who's just never going to give up in their pursuit of whatever goal yeah. they have going. It's it's that Captain America, like, I can do this all day type of thing. Yes, absolutely. That level of persistence. We love seeing that in a character. Um, let's roll another another D12, see what we get for a second trait. Right, second positive trait we get. Hold on, the windows. 11. 11. Courageous. Courageous. All right. So basically, we have this Captain is a America. Hero. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. straight up a hero. They're a hero. The antagonist is in love with them for some reason. I, I'm into it. it. It works. So we got the heroic, persistent, courageous. Now, that doesn't mean that any of these other traits aren't dismissed, but it's just saying these are the main traits that we see in this person. This is somebody who's not scared and is going to fight for what they're going to fight for. Yes. But but they they gotta have the one flaw. They gotta have the one negative trait. So for that, I gotta roll singular another flaw. <laughs> They're uh, one flaw for depth. Eleven. They're a loner. They're a loner. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're, I see that. That works. That yeah. works with persistent and courageous. Persistent and courageous, and then but they're the type to work alone. Again, again, I'm getting. You said hero. I'm getting straight up superhero vibes from this person. I am too. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting Captain America vibes, but less of a leader, almost more. I think like one thing about loner, like a lot of times people kind of associate loner with like, they're not talkative. They stick to their own. They're like a hermit. No, it's like a loner is just someone who's preferred to not work in a team. They're, they're sticking away from people rather for trust reasons or whatever. So or I'm thinking of somebody. Own. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking with that loner, with the reason behind that, that can actually be tied with the antagonist. Maybe maybe a bad oh. love triangle happened. Maybe a bad, you know... That's true. And maybe the antagonist wants to be a sidekick, wants to be a partner, wants to be involved with the protagonist somehow. And that would also fuel their their desire to oh. do whatever they're, whatever they're doing. But I know I'm that look. Kind of, I'm getting a specific vibe here. Okay. And it's not completely accurate, but it's sort of an interpretation of what we got going on. All right. Um, do you know the Flashpoint DC? Do you know that event that happens? Vaguely. I know events of it. I know there's a whole thing. But isn't there... Um, I th I'm going to guess you're going here with Thomas Wayne Batman yes. and Martha Wayne Joker. Now, yes, exactly. That's what I was thinking. That's a little bit different because it's more like a tragic, but kind of the idea of maybe once partners turned to one of them commits a change, which makes the other a loner and makes the other one obsessed with the whatever. But you, again, different ulterior me methods because so, Thomas so, Wayne still kind of loved his, his wife, but she she was evil. So, so there's there's already love coming from beforehand, and but one person fell out of love when they when when the villain when, turned whatever event, yes okay i'm into that i'm into Again, that does it need to be superhero it could be like you know just two two people that like adventurous people like that that you know maybe nathan drakeish vibes i don't know like it doesn't necessarily need to be a superhero just our our uh, protagonist that we have right now. I feel like once we get setting down, we can kind of figure out what the protagonist is going to look like. But those are kind of the traits we're going with now. Yes. So I think we should roll for our antagonist. See what we get here. Okay, I'm into it. Roll for the antagonist. So the first, so the single positive that we're getting for our, our antagonist 
Doing yes, because one. death. Uh, single positive. Three. Adventurous. Adventurous. All right. That works. Okay. Makes up. Kind of goes along with the courageous. They're both willing to go outside the box and willing to get out of their comfort zones. Now, adventurous, courageous can be two different things. Maybe he, this antagonist is pushing the comfort zone maybe a little too far. Maybe he's a little too adventurous. Um, and it's less encouraged, more in selfishness of wanting to be, you know, the adventure for themselves, whatever that reason may be. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking? Um, I, I kind of want to see at least one of the negative character traits before I, before I go off too much on this. That is valid. All right, so I'm going to roll one, one d12 for the first negative trait of our antagonist. Six. Six. Awesome. So oh, selfish. selfish. That just lined up with what I just said. It absolutely <laughs> does. You, you were going in that direction anyways, and this just completely solidified it. So they're very selfish. Okay, so... Selfish and adventurous uh, versus someone who's courageous and a loner, but they're the, they're the protagonist. I feel like we gotta have some have these people be two sides of the same coin, kind of going for, um, almost like a Professor X Magneto type thing, where they have a very similar end goal. It's just their ways of going about those goals have to be very different. So the antagonist yeah. is more ad adventurous and selfish. They're doing whatever they're doing for, for just the worst reasons and in the worst way. But it's got to be something. Mm -hmm. The end goal should be something similar to what the protagonist wants. I agree completely. Real quick, Favin, you've been completely off today with your rolls, but I've been paying attention. Oh, but I, I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> they, they just I don't off. think he's gotten a one yet. <laughs> oh, Favin, you're having a bad day, man. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of agree with you. I think that part of that selfishness could be that entitlement to our protagonist. That love, that affection is sort of tied in with selfish, you belong to me sort of vibe. So almost maybe a tox a relationship that has gone toxic, maybe a friendship that one the antagonist has always seen as more than a friendship. That is very much in that nice guy bubble, but it could it could be once lovers that have changed. It could be they were never levels no le never lovers, but the uh, antagonist felt like they should be for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Let's see what our last is. Kind of see yes. what. Um, really wraps this character together yeah yeah we do we do have a few good solid roots so we, can, we could go here mm -hmm. okay and the second negative character trait for the antagonist is four they are impatient impatient Ooh, okay that would definitely just add a add a rush to things and definitely keep solidifying solidifying the nice guy thing it was completely <laughs> solidified that they're like they're like you should be with me you should be with me you should be with me just like po poking prodding at the at the protagonist the entire time yeah by the way, as soon as we call Favin out, he gets it on the next one. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. God damn it. <laughs> he, just yeah, boy, he, just, right he just needs to be completely, like, validated in this. Yes. <laughs> so, selfish, impatient, adventurous, those things really line up with a character. Now, when you think about a character who is kind of like that... Um, one weird comparison doesn't really fit the idea doesn't totally fit the idea but I just I like to kind of root these characters and other characters who we've seen um, almost kind of you know cat that kind of Catwoman vibe Catwoman impatient adventurous selfish very much so now there's a lot of other positive traits to Catwoman tied with Batman and with her own character but kind of the idea of after something for herself but now we got to kind of tie it in with specific motivations to the protagonist that's true i i see where you came up with that i i, I do mm -hmm. the thing is the, the way i see it we have a lot of different routes that's one route we could go because we have the kind of catwoman batman type relationship route we have the Magneto Professor X type relationship route, and we also have the yep. nice guy type route. So, so we kind of got a few options here. <laughs> of, uh, I think yeah. will come from the different wild cards and the settings and the motivation that we end up getting. Mm -hmm. so and by the way, in the Catwoman uh, Batman uh, archetype, Batman is simping over Catwoman. It is not the other way. <laughs> oh, Let's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. She commits so many crimes, and he's just like, okay, you're just, hot. It's fine. We go, Selena. Oh, Selena. Oh, dang. 
So oh, well, Halle Berry. Right next to- uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, we didn't talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay? Is it? Uh, this, this is gonna sound bad. Is it bad that literally when you first said Catwoman, the first image that comes to mind is Halle Berry Catwoman? Is that bad? The thing is, no, because she she would have made such a great Catwoman, but yeah, she they really gave was. her such a dog shit movie. Yeah. Yeah, and also just like I feel like I think more about the memed on movie than I think about like regular Catwoman because yeah, or like what other actor like Michelle Pfeiffer, valid. Um, Anne who's going to say Anne Hathaway? I don't. I don't know anyone who th- immediately thinks Anne Hathaway when they think Catwoman. Yeah, that's true. She, <laughs> as much as she was a part of it, she was almost she was a little tiny bit forgettable, on part with Christopher Nolan struggling to write compelling female characters. But that's okay, you know, Chris Nolan. Yeah. All of our male characters can have really intense <laughs> relationships that are really close. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's <laughs> not the women, right? Okay, so I that's, think... We... we should have that as another wild card, is Christopher Nolan it up and don't know how to write females <laughs> at all. And just write really <laughs> weirdly gay relationships with all of our men. Just completely and, homoerotic. Uh, just... <laughs> yeah, all not right. on purpose, though, that's the thing. Accidental, <laughs> accidental homoeroticism. I'm, all right, we'll add that as a wild card later. Okay, all right. Speaking of wild awesome. cards, we gotta do two of them now. Yes, we do. We gotta mix this story up a bit. Okay, so the first of the new wild cards we gotta get... Run D twenty. We got a roll. Is a ten. It is. Which is a ten. The plot takes uh, place inside one town, building, vehicle, or even room. Make the plot as claustrophobic as possible. So basically, we have. It's a bottle episode. It's like a. It's one single. It's as small of a place as it can possibly take place in. Oh my god. Okay, I got an idea. All I right. got an idea. Let's hear it. Two people. That for whatever reason are inside of an, an escape room or something like that there is they have to they get something out of being the first to figure out the escape room and then there's a ton of interpersonal drama between them and why they're there and stuff okay. it's, it's one room one small area almost like like saw but between a broken up couple or something or two friends with a weird dynamic I love that I think that I think like yeah. putting it inside an escape room or some kind of puzzle or some kind of just confined space that they have to get out of that makes a lot of sense. I feel like we would need to add in a few side characters just so it's not my dinner with Andre, two people talking the entire time. We, we could have, no, have just a few the side characters. The thing is, we could, depending on the genre, we could really fuck it up and make it like a horror, almost make it like Saw, where these two people are trapped in a room and it's like a. It's like a fuck. You gotta get out of there. But then it unravels the relationship between these two. But at that point, is the antagonist the the other person, or is the antagonist? Oh, but then it's a reveal that the she they. Oh, okay. Okay, were you thinking it's a reveal that like the one one of the people in the escape room is the jigsaw of it? Or yeah, that they had forced this because they wanted another shot at whatever they had or whatever, and then the primary person's like what the fuck is your problem <laughs> you think get this to is lock us in a room like together <laughs> yeah okay Ooh. so it's like a it's like a surprise antagonist but you can see how much like it unravels between them and i think that there can be more points of them like almost getting a little closer um <laughs> I, I heard you but... say once that you like you like horror and you like puzzles so i made saw for you and put it's... you inside saw <laughs> what the fuck is it <laughs> <laughs> okay, I actually like that idea. Knowing us, it's gonna be a romantic comedy, but that's fine. We're gonna. <laughs> okay. Villain is putting it together. Okay. That that that's a right. that's a good place to start. That's, that that works. I like uh, it. Also, Justin has came in to threaten me. Oh, I'll God. fuck you up later. Colin can the hammer. I don't know what this is about. This is about know. something I said about Batman. I'm just confused of why, but why in the first message there he put the word up. Oh, fuck yeah, that's true. That's not like him. <laughs> that's incredibly like him. <laughs> right, okay. so this story is about me and Justin locked in a room together. <laughs> I'm there happened. with a camera for some reason. 
<laughs> You're the antagonist because you don't get good enough shots. <laughs> I ruin, I ruin the whole thing. You're like, you're like a, you're like the, the recording a fight of the high school. You got like that level of world star, world going. stars. <laughs> okay, okay, we got, you got to get the, uh, the next new wild card. Next new wild card. All right, gonna roll another d20 and we get a four. What is four? Four is we already got four. We already so we're got four. Move roll on. again. We're gonna re-roll that. Roll again. Ten. We already got ten. What the fuck? Yes, we did. Another roll. So, <laughs> roll that back again. One. One. So we have to go to name go generator. Go to. Oh, you yep. have to go to the online name generator and use one of the names that come up for either the protagonist or antagonist. All right, I already mm -hmm. have it pulled up. We're not going to use the ones I have pulled up now. I'm going to pull up the name generator and then refresh it, and we'll use one of those names after the refresh. Yep. Yes. Okay. So here's here's the name generator. I'm just going to refresh it real quick. Uh, okay. Here here are the names that we got: Akeem Deacon, Danielle Hickman, Manikam McDermott, Leah McKenzie, Danielle Booker. Deanna Riley, Mason Copeland, Sid Donald, Vinny Nguyen, and Philip Nava. Is it kind of weird that the first name, Akeem Deacon? I kind of like that name. I do like that name, too. Deacon is kind of a badass last name. It is. On the flip side, I would love to have a character named Vinny in this. <laughs> Vinny Nguyen? All right. All right, Vinny Nguyen. I, but I like Akeem, though. I really do like Akeem. I think I like Akeem better. Yeah, Ake Akeem Deacon just it, it, it's a strong sounding name. Mm -hmm. for, for whatever reason, Deacon is just a cool cool sounding last name and Akeem Akeem Deacon. It just it just sounds a nice comment. What if time. that was the relationship though? V Vinny was the bad guy who was in love with Akeem. Okay, Vinny and Ake Vinny like, Nguyen and Akeem Vinny Deacon. Vinny Akeem. Yeah. All right. All right. Akeem right. Vinny Deacon. <laughs> about, I, I can we be Vinny Deacon. Cool name like Akeem, but everybody just calls him Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, so which no. name are we using for which? Akeem, Akeem, I like. Akeem Deacon is our protagonist. He yeah. wants to get out of the room. And he clearly has some tension with Vinny, who is our antagonist. Now, do we want... Should they be like exes or something, or should they be? Um, should they not have had anything? I, f I feel like we should we should wait until we get the uh, protagonist motivation, and I think we should wait to wait to nail that down. Okay. Okay. That's why he's so upset with society. They won't learn his name. <laughs> <laughs> they all call me Vinny. <laughs> Okay, we'll, so, we'll write that in. We'll, we'll say that Vinny's real name is like something else, but everyone just calls him Vinny. <laughs> that that is a character arc for some reason. All right, all right. So now we got to roll for our for our protagonist motivation. Yes. So, so what what are the, what are they going for the whole time? Got to roll a d twenty for it. D twenty. So yep. Rolling a three. Righteous politics. Oh shit! Okay, that fucks with things. That really fucks with things. Okay. Do we got our mulligan? I feel like I want to. <laughs> I do not want to make this about politics. Just, well, that just does not. Oh god, are we gonna use our one mulligan on the promote motivation? Yes, okay. I want. I, if the setting fucks us, it fucks us. But <laughs> I cannot. The setting I cannot or the genre. Remember, control. we still have to do the genre here. I know, but if but this dude's whole point is that he wants. <laughs> political agenda he's like i gotta go out there to run for president okay okay i i i agree i agree we're gonna use our one mulligan here shit okay rolling the next d20 14 14 love of family okay love of family makes so much more sense so he's doing something for motivations about his family yeah, and maybe it protect them. Maybe protect them. Maybe maybe they're being threatened by the antagonist. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe their family doesn't have easily... a lot of money or something, and the antagonist is promising money if they get out of there. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the, I feel like this one isn't as good as we as it sounds at the start. But motivated by love of yeah. family, and they're getting they're getting fucked with by the antagonist. It has to be. 
I think that's an easy one, is that the antagonist is threatening or holding something over on his family, so he needs to do whatever he needs to do to protect them. It's like a... That makes sense, though. He's courageous and he's persistent. He... A loner, a loner if his family is close to him. That's probably some of the only people he's actually close to, so... All right. It could even be seen as a thing by Vinny with a, you're so, you know, you've never seen me as your family or something. You're like, yeah, you like your family so much. Like, you know, that type of thing. Like, you, Vinny's you left me to issues. be with your family. Now you're not going to have a family and you can be with me. <laughs> Vinny as like a weird friend X thing turned antagonist. He's got issues. So. I like that. I feel like love of family, the family being threatened, something being held over the family, and that being a reason for him to continue pushing Fair. is a valued reason. And he's persistent, so he's going to continue. All right, I so, can get into that. We're defining the protagonist, antagonist, and protagonist motivation. Actually, no, I think that we do our setting first, actually. Yes, yes, the next step is our setting. we got to roll a d6 to get our yes. setting. So, d6, I'm going to bring up d6. Rolling four. Oh god. It's a period piece. It's a period piece. Okay. This could go all <laughs> over the place. Uh, World War II, medieval times, the roaring 20s, the Old West, so it's cowboy times, like in 1950s, 1980s, or prehistoric, and they're all a bunch of cavemen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's not some, there's not nothing bad. I feel, I feel like we yeah, can work we can with kind of with our idea. We can adapt. I think the one that one might be annoying is prehistoric, but other yeah. than that, I feel like we could work with kind of this idea we have. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Going to roll another d6 and one. So that would be World War Two. It's a world. It's world it's War taking II. place in World War Two. How the fuck. Okay, so it's claustrophobic, Ooh. World War II, something like that. Okay, uh, there's, there's a lot of like different. Uh, there's a lot of different settings that we could have people could be confined to in World War II, mm -hmm. depending on how dark we want to get. I don't want to go. Yeah, that yeah, me okay. neither. I'm not. I don't want to go there either. So we're just gonna skip right past that. Um, <laughs> we are going to stick it with World War II, but I'm trying to think. Did you ever see that movie called The Wall? I think the it had wall. John Cena in it. The Wall. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're both just, like, about, like trapped behind a wall. Yeah. With a sniper. They're, they're pinned down. Yeah. Could We could go with, like, that idea. It's, like, two people hold up in a building. Okay. And then... It could unravel their relationship in the in the army, and how would we have that be motivated thing, by love like, of family? I still like the idea of keeping um, Vinny and uh, I got Akeem. It. I got it. Okay, okay I okay, absolutely okay. know. Okay, so they're trapped. Okay, it's World War Two. They're not. Yep. Uh, they're not pinned down or anything like that. It's taking place in London, England, during the Blitz. They're trapped inside a building that has been bombed. The antagonist has something go has some kind of power over the family because we have to remember that we have the, the protagonist has to be motivated by love of family. So it's during World War II, but they're not all soldiers. So the protagonist and the antagonist are trapped Here's in one thing, bombed out building. In them the being place. trapped, in it, love of family couldn't necessarily mean he's holding something over the family. It could mean that this character wants to get out of the building to get to back to his family. He wants to protect his family from the Blitz, but he can't inside this building. Now, it can be revealed that the antagonist, Vinny, had something to do with them being in the, staying in the building, prolonging it or something like that. He knew the Blitz was coming, maybe, and he wanted to, he wanted, he wanted uh, Akeem by himself so that they could, he could pursue this um, interest with him. Okay. Because if we're going with Akeem and Vinny and we want it to be love, back in during World War II, the idea of homosexual love was not was frowned upon. It was It's very true. So that could be a character arc between them, um, with almost for forbidden love, one side embracing it more than the other, you know, that could be another another sense of tension in it. That makes a lot of sense i'm just thinking about literally 
how are we going to track these characters? How are we going to have mm. family be like the family be literally involved somewhere? And how do we get that during World War II? I'm just thinking about the literal place yeah. and 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 situation that they're in that they're trapped. Uh, and so, another, but the just, thing is, it's motivation. It's not. It doesn't need to be. His goal is specifically related to if blank happens, it saves his family. But his motivation is he's motivated by his love, his family. So maybe in survive. his mind, he's like, I need to get out of here because I need to see my, you know, my my son. I got to go see my mom and dad. I got to go see whatever. Um, OK, that that that's very true. That's very true. That makes a lot of sense. And actually, I'm kind of I'm like switching it up. I don't. I like the idea of them being young soldiers, like without their family less tied to maybe one of them has like a fiance or something, but their family more tied to like brothers and and like parents okay. and less about like I got to go see my kids um, because I think the idea of young young soldiers and their being loved kind of is like a it's just that, a, it's a little bit nicer true. than like than like you know the idea of of the gay relationship being seen as like home wrecking I don't want to present that but okay. all right I maybe. I like that I like that so we got to have them trapped in an enemy bunker or something like that behind enemy lines or they're pinned down in a base camp and they can't really escape Mm -hmm. because they're surrounded by enemy soldiers and maybe maybe he he one of them got the had the letter the telegram whatever with the mission maybe Vinny knew that pushing into the bunker or whatever was they were not supposed to do that they're like at first sign of blank retreat like, but then Vinny wanted a chance to pursue something with Akeem. So even if something does blossom in there, Akeem goes like, wait, you just fucking, you're the reason we're fucking in here right now. And then Vinny's oh. going to be like, well, I didn't think this would happen, but it's a chance for us to like, whatever. And then that's where the tension really starts to okay, super hard kick in. So original tension, they kind of grow closer, but then that tension, once the big reveal that caused by him, that tension kind of kicks back up. I like that a lot. That makes a whole lot of sense. That works a lot. Okay. Okay. So now, now it's time. We're gonna for... get fucking. We're gonna get animated comedy. By the way, like yeah, I, yeah, the, yeah. We're about to do the do the one thing. Like all of these the wild cards and everything are designed to completely fuck with us. We're about to get the one that could absolutely just like trash everything and make our project to just complete trash. We're about to have to decide for our genre. <laughs> so, shit. Okay. So first, we gotta roll a d6 to find out if we're doing one or two genres. Yes. Uh, okay, rolling on a d6. It is a six. So we get we get one genre. We, we just get one. <laughs> okay. That leaves less up to the chances. Yeah, that, may, that works. That works. Uh, okay. The next roll. The, the, d12. D12. They'll rolling. Be 12, they'll be twelve. They'll be twelve. They'll be twelve. One. It's a comedy. Oh god. Oh no. Okay, we were we were getting serious with this. We were going for the Oscars with this one. We were, we were doing know, so good. Such a, it was a good was story. A nice... Two soldiers in love on the front line, and they're pinned down, and they're trapped in a bunker together. And now it's like, no, it's it's a fuck. It's goofy. It's, 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 it's ha ha. <laughs> Is haha. Oh my god. Oh my but god. But even like like Favin said a dark comedy, I don't know where a ton of comedic value about two young men in love it trapped in a bunker, or at least well. unrequited love that is very dynamic and intense. <laughs> I don't know where you, the jokes fit in. <laughs> like you're gonna be right the jokes in here. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely this is oh god, this is gonna be at least it fits the animated thing now. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Uh, oh, fuck, okay. Well, like, the, 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 basically, I feel like uh, it, most comedies should have a good storyline to them, anyways, and they, we just like throw a whole bunch of dick and fart jokes in. Like, I agree, but like, you just and every character has to get hit in the even, nuts like four times. <laughs> even like the best comedies, like a lot of really good comedies, they have compelling characters, they have good story and stuff, but. The source material, even when it's something really intense, it's like there's there's room for jokes, room for humor and stuff. This is such a fucking straightforward, intense, singular area story about, like, 
you know, such a such an awful thing for people to go through. Oh yeah, and, and, I don't, I don't and now know. we have to be ha ha. We have to be funny. Okay, both the characters are played by Tyler Perry. <laughs> Oh, no, we, still got, we got we got three more wild cards to go. So like, yeah, oh shit. Okay, how dare we think that we'd have an actual compelling script ever with this show? <laughs> how dare us? The way, What's wrong with the us? way I see it is kind of a, a serious comedy. Like these characters <laughs> are going to be cracking jokes. They are going to be like whatever with each other. But like it's still a, a one claustrophobic room where they could die, and the dude wants to go see his family. But maybe the jokes are specific for bringing levity to the situation between these two, and that they're two guys that kind of have to be funny right now because if they don't, they lose kind of lose hope. Uh, okay, okay. So now we need to we need to define our motivations specifically. So are, is that's what we're going with? We're going with two young soldiers. They're pinned down in an enemy bunker or on in their base camp, something like that. Mm -hmm. They they're by it they're by like a bunker once the blitz is happening in London, they hop in the bunker seal it up they can't get out after they're kind of trapped in this bunker, um, and maybe they get, um, uh, I feel, like I, uh, I, feel, I feel like if we're gonna go with the bunker thing we shouldn't go London I, I was thinking London just so it would be we would have an excuse to have other characters there and be and be a bit more dynamic and kind of avoid just it being just straight World War Two. But if we are gonna go with that, I feel like we should go with like an, a bunker like like right on the front or something like like they find a okay. Nazi soldier bunker. I like that. And then I think they need like a reason to be like I think like they go into the bunker because they're getting like striked by something. There's like a they're getting Artillery, hit by an airstrike, getting hit by like artillery airstrike, bombed, whatever. But then it, um, uh, it kind of crashes up in there. It, it, like you know, they can't get out for whatever reason. And maybe, maybe instead of um, it being that he knew he shouldn't go in there, Vinny has like the radio, and he said like the radio doesn't work in here, anything like that. But in actuality, he like purposely turned on turned it off like took the batteries out of it and it's like wait we could have been contacting somebody for rescue and he's like yeah but like we can do that later but we need this was a chance for us to you know like take a break from the war like Vinny could even like his motivation could be less set it could be selfish he won't he, this war was terrifying this is a chance for him to get close with somebody he's really enjoying That's right. and, and also take a break from the fear that makes a lot of sense the bunker's got food and water in it for survival so it's like the way he saw it, it was like a mini little vacation, but. Um, and, and Akeem would hate that because he's courageous. He's trying to do the right thing. He's, he, he sees himself as a soldier. He's going all Captain America. Akeem is like trying to actually be a good soldier and do the right thing. But Vinny's just like, no, fuck that. Let's desert. Let's chill here. No one's going to care that we're down here hiding from the enemy. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but he's like, give us a week. We'll call in for whatever. And then, you know, we'll be seen as heroes because we survived. And then. He was like, that's not, that's not what being a hero is about. And then, oh, joke's on you. It was pro-military the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, we're making propaganda here. Be, he thought it wasn't going to be propaganda. <laughs> joke's on you. It's a, it's a movie right. about the American, American army. It's going to be propaganda. So we got, they kind of got an idea of how the story can unfold. Some plot points will happen. Some jokes will happen. But we need to get our last wild cards in to see how we truly fuck up the script. Yes. The last three wild cards. Oh god. Yep. Three of them. We can't re-roll. We can't re-roll at all. Yeah, and we we use our single mulligan. So yep. so whatever we get, we get here. Okay, so, so the first of the last three wild cards, a D twenty. An eight. Eight is add blank into the Oh script. no, oh no, okay. Okay. So I gotta roll one uh, gotta roll a D six. If it's a six you all get to decide what, what 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 we get. There's a wild card. There's wild card channel points redeem at the bottom. You use that, and then you the first person to use that gets to decide what to add to the script. But yep. for now, we gotta roll. Uh, we, we gotta we gotta roll to see if we add all roll. the other ones. And the other five options are not great. Let's be completely honest here. Yes. Uh, wizards, ninjas, zombies, aliens, and time travel. <laughs> but this uh, this script is getting very ridiculous. But let's go. Wait, Let's have go. you rolled yet? No, I have not rolled the the, okay. the D6 yet. 
here's the thing. Favin just did the roll on the thing, and he got a six, which is chat decides. Now, I know we usually run with our rolls, but do we want to let the Favin roll it? We go with the chat decides. I'm kind of interested to see what comes out. Okay, yep. Yeah. Chad decides. All right. First person to use Chad the wild card to gets to decide. Oh, God. I'm not excited to see what they, whatever they come up with. It's because you get one word. You get one word to describe something to add to the script. It, it, it could be nukes. It could be wizards. It could be aliens. It could be sex. It could be like whatever the fuck. Like you get one word. Mm-hmm. I should have put that. Uh, I meant to put that on the on the game itself. Musical. I knew. I knew. I knew it was gonna be Favin. I knew he was gonna pick something awful. Why, man? <laughs> Why you gotta do this to It's him? already a comedy fan. <sighs> oh, no. okay. Musical. It's a musical now. It's an, it's a it's a it's a comedy musical World War Two romance movie. Now it's a musical comedy. Great, great. I've been in this bunker for so long. <laughs> Why did Vinny take the batteries off the radio? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Fuck. I can spin it. I can spin this. <laughs> I can spin this. You can spin. You can spin anything. <laughs> the musical part comes into the deliria of them being in a bunker, and being cabin fevered. That the more it goes into that, it gets fantastical. The musical starts to happen, and at first it's them just kind of singing songs. It's kind of fun, but then it turns into them hearing the music to go with the songs, and they think it's a musical. Uh, Boom! Okay. It's a psychological thriller now. <laughs> No, it really is turning into saw. Shit, okay. All right. <laughs> Cabin Fever. They begin to sing to each other. You're going to sing to... Okay, that's where the musical comes in. Great! Fucking, it's a yes. musical now. Yay! The and that's new... the first wild card. We just got two more to go. Yeah, just two more. Just two more. And let's see what the first one of the... Uh, the or the new... The second one is. Roll a two. But uh, Protagonist has a badass custom weapon that Lib must describe in 10 seconds. Go! Go, badass weapon. World War Two. He has a long-ass revolver called the Hellraiser, and it uses incinerary ammo, and it, like, lights shit on fire when he shoots it. Uh, uh, perfect. Perfect. Your 10 seconds is up. That's perfect. Has a giant revolver called the Hellraiser. <laughs> that, it has fire ammo, Loaded with way. incendiary bullets. What is, this is a comedy musical. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's perfect. perfect. It's perfect, man. It makes absolute sense. He's like, like oh, oh, I miss my family so much. As long as I have hell reason <laughs> with me, but it's like, it's not like a long, like an actual revolver for the time. It's like one of those thick, like, <laughs> you know, like the cyberpunk mega barrels. It's oh like, no! Oops. It's like Hellboy's gun, basically. <laughs> yeah, he's walking around with just like a comically large revolver. It looks like a, an actual revolver in the hand of a baby. It's just fucking <laughs> way too big for his hand. It works. It works. That absolutely works. See, now, yeah, now he has it. It does have a foregrip. <laughs> he's got a. It's, it's a revolver that he holds like a rifle, basically. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. I absolutely love oh. it. Okay. God. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. So now our It's like Cloud's Buster Sword, but for a World War II it's a ro- revolver for someone in World War II. Okay. Now well, we gotta move on to the last wild card. I like that we finally got that one too. I put that one in there hoping that we you would get it someday and then I, I we get it in for this it. one? Yeah, of course this we do. One? Of course we do. Of course we do. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get it during the fucking badass gunslingers one. We get it during World War II romance. Yay. Oh, all right, the, okay. all right, the last wild card that we get from the main game, rolling a three. Oh, fuck. This oh, movie no. is now the start of a cinematic universe and we'll shoehorn in. I, how the hell? Why? Fucking, it's a cinematic universe? Okay, so it that means... It starts a cinematic universe. It's the this start. Is this, not... is the kick- this is the Iron Man of, the, of a new cinematic universe. Oh, Yay! Okay, well, he's got, he's got a giant ass gun called Hellraiser. So obviously, this character is interesting enough. Yeah, but but it's not just about this character. It's it's about the world around them. So are we in some like weird alternate magical World War Two? Are we in some like sure. demented Hydra? This World is War II? Uh, the man in the the man in the high table or high tap high, high chair, whatever. Man in the high castle, I think. 
Yeah, where like the Germans and Japan ended up winning. Oh yeah. Sure, it's an alternate history World War II. All right, alternate history so, musical World War II. So II. basically, it's going to be one singular movie, but at the end when they finally leave like the bunker or whatever, it's like it's too late. We lost. <laughs> we and then dun, dun, our dun, dun, dun. like not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but also in doing that, it being at the start of the cinematic universe, we have to add, we have to shoehorn in other characters that just show up, do something memorable, and then be like, I'll see okay. you later. And then they like go off into their own story. And that has to happen so, at least three times. We need to, um, uh, <laughs> on the radio, we hear names of characters that are important, but the throwaway lines. In the cabin, they find pictures or dossiers of specially enhanced individuals that could be a threat or something they gotta put together a team you know like the like <laughs> batman v superman where batman just pulls up all of that expositionary like oh the oh, like, lex files the and they yeah, already have all their own logos and everything yeah <laughs> yep oh god so, here <laughs> that's basically where i got this is this is a really important bunker for some reason yeah for whatever reason they, they find the fucking the uh the german army fucking hydra bunker where they're doing super secret enhanced technologies and shit G great love it so maybe it's kind of like wolfenstein too we're making our bj blaskowitz his first movie is going to be about him and his weird his kind of affair with another soldier well like not a like their love affair not like they even cheating on anyone and they're but he also has hellraiser uh, I mean, no, 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 no. BJ Blaskowitz has got to be like mentioned. He's got to know. He's got to be a side character. He comes in, Deus Ex Machina saves the day, saves the main character's ass. He, and oh, it's a it's a Wolfenstein like, movie. It's a backdoor pilot to Wolfenstein. Gotta, so we, he's like, he's the big cameo at the end because he pulls him out of it, and then like, oh, did we win the war? And he's just like, not yet, and then tosses him guns. Basically, like how how at the end of Split, it turns out it's like, oh shit, it's a fucking unbreakable sequel. We didn't, and they didn't know that, and that was a plot twist. Basically, this is yeah. a we, this is like plot twist. It's a Wolfenstein sequel or Wolfenstein. Yeah, you didn't know this whole time. It's a it's been a Wolfenstein movie the entire time. Exactly, that makes it's, makes sense. So we're making the Wolfenstein pop. cinematic universe, but musical. Yes, but we're starting off with a musical, <laughs> a, a comedy musical about two soldiers trapped in a bunker yeah there, there's no wolfenstein soldiers. action shit that goes on it's just a nice little romance movie romance comedy okay oh, God. so then the bunker is gonna have dossiers on the technology that the germans are creating which is all gonna be wolfenstein technology so all the wolfenstein fans are gonna go wait a minute that's from wolfenstein <laughs> yeah all the wolfenstein fans that are gonna see our gay romantic comedy if world war ii soldiers there's a there's a big there's a big overlap in wolfenstein fans and people who would watch this movie there's big big, big overlap in... okay oh, no so i think we got it i think we could start the story but before we do that we have a little ad read yes yes we do before we go into the story and it, of course this ad read today is sponsored by none other than us this episode of Riding with Dice is sponsored by, again, us at Select Cert Network. Uh, if you're loving what you're hearing or seeing and you want to support us, why not go over to patreon.com slash Network? You can support us from a couple bucks a month to the crazy $1,000 level. Please don't do that. A couple bucks a month, live and uncut version. Those are all the things you should be looking at. If you want to see everything um, uh, that we're doing here live and uncut, you want to see the podcast on Fridays um, live and be a part of the uh, the audience there, then um, uh, you can go to the Live and Uncut tier. It's eleven fifty US. I think it's around fifteen dollars Canadian. Um, if you don't can't support us on the Patreon, and you just want to support us by giving us a like, share, supporting us on the socials in any way you can, that would be much appreciated too. We love you guys. We love you for sticking around with us for everything. Again, if you can't do the Patreon, that's definitely okay. Give us a like. Give us a follow if you can. Give us a sub on the YouTube if you're watching us there. And, uh, yeah, that is what the ad read. I think it's time we get into the nitty-gritty of this story. Yes, we, we, gotta, we gotta actually start writing. We gotta actually structure this whole thing out. So, recap. Alternate history, World War II, two soldiers, one's in love with the other, and trapped with the one that they're in love with. 
uh, Vinny and Akeem. Vinny's the antagonist. Akeem's the protagonist. Oh, fuck. There is a lot to unpack here. Yep. Okay, so... It's let's... a musical, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it eventually becomes a musical. It, it eventually becomes a musical. So, how, how do we start this off? How do we start this whole thing off? Alright, black screen. Very first narration. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a soul child. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's going in. As a kid, I always wanted to be a soldier. This is a comedy, so it's got to start off like that. We're starting off with a good fellow Also, good who fellas wants parody. to be a soldier? What, is, what a weird thing to think about. Uh, there, there, there's some there's some people out there who would who 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 go for the propaganda and fall for it and really end up about that life. There 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 are people like that. Fair enough. So we start it there, and then boom, hard cut to in the trenches. We got two guys advancing on a unit. Boom, explosions everywhere, real intense. But the focus is on the two guys here. Go grab it. <laughs> All right. So, super intense. They're rushing forward. They're giving each other call -outs. He's saying, Hey, Vinny, cover my six. And he's rushing forward. And he's like, I got your back, Deacon. And they're like the coolest two dudes ever. I didn't advancing know. on somewhere. I, you know, when I first started this, I thought it was like going to be like more normal. They're, two, they're parts of the unit. But the fact that this is a comedy, we have to go over the top with it now. These yeah, two, these two the, guys are badasses. They're bad the two coolest dudes ever. You know, and, th and that's why in the that's why in the end the, the Germans end up winning because they didn't have them. They were trapped in the bunker. They could have turned the tide of the war on their own. Were... <laughs> yes. Oh, so no. they advance forward and they make it to what seems to be a bunker. And he says, "Is this the spot? Is this where all the top secret German <laughs> science things are?" <laughs> is is that a direct <laughs> quote? Is that the direct yeah, that quote of dial? Straight up. This story is written like a Rick and Morty episode. Oh, so God. It, <laughs> it's, this, is, this is the place with all the German science stuff, and we got to get in there. So you can pick locks, right, Deacon? And then Deacon goes, can I pick locks? And then starts picking the lock. No, I, I thought I thought that was <laughs> I thought the whole time, I thought for that one you were gonna be like, can I pick locks? He pulls out Hellraiser, just shoots it. Yeah, that's, that's... way cooler. He just, <laughs> he just shoots the door open, like it, it, like he shoots the lock and the door just opens up with them. And, that, <laughs> and by the way, every time he shoots, he blows the smoke off his gun, <laughs> even when it makes no sense. He has an automatic rifle. <laughs> Yeah, every time <laughs> he has a flamethrower just burn burn him down a whole zone all those like <laughs> alright and then he shoots it open and then they're like alright you go or um uh Vinny says you go in Deke I'll watch the outside he calls him Deke now by the way oh god <laughs> oh god okay. really fast the food. Like, I just realized Vin Vin is a little <laughs> 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 Uh, he's played by Vin Diesel, by the way, but he's still supposed to be like a young soldier. But Vin Diesel is playing Vinny. Oh God! <laughs> of course, of course he is. Vinny Nguyen, played by fucking. Oh wait, Vin never Diesel. mind. I forgot his last name. <laughs> he can't be played by Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. okay. You know what? I, I feel like we we don't need. Uh, at least I don't need any actors for these. No, I don't it's need pretty. As, as long as Vinny is played by a Vietnamese person, a Vietnamese-American, we're good there. Yeah. Uh, Akeem, too. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll yeah. We'll be good. I, 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 we'll I, cast accordingly. I, we know these characters enough to think of them as them. We don't need the actors to put the face on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Okay. Vin so, Diesel will be playing BJ Blazkowicz, then. That is confirmed. <laughs> that, that, that one actually sounds like a casting that would happen in real life, too. They, they said yep. if there was a Wolfenstein movie, it, it would realistically be Vin Diesel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so they break in. But Vinny's watching from the outside. Deke's in there investigating stuff. And then all you hear is Vinny yell, It's a blitz! It's a blitz! And Deacon's like, what? And then Vinny rushes in and closes the door and locks it. And we don't explain how the lock got unbroke, but he locks it. I didn't just lose. Didn't you just shoot off the log? All right, you just like froze for a solid couple seconds there. Okay. So, Vinny calls out the blitz, 
Deacon kind of rushes, tries to get to the door, but Vinny goes in and shuts the door. Deacon's like, what are you doing, Vinny? And he's like, we're going to die out there, Deke. we got to stay in here for a little bit. So then Deacon's a little skeptical. He doesn't want to stay locked up in here, but he's like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll trust you on this call, Vinny. And then Vinny locks the door, but we never explain how the lock got fixed because uh, Deacon just exploded it. But Vinny locks the door and then says, like, we'll be good in here for a bit. And then from there on, we just kind of them talking about kind of looking at the stuff, cracking a couple jokes about like, you know, the war and stuff. But at, at the moment, they're just waiting the storm out. They're not they're not locked in yet. They don't think they're trapped in there yet. Yes, uh, I feel like I feel like we, they, we have to take some time to look around the bunker and like they take some time to actually look at the experiments and the technology of the uh of the place that they're in, because they're they're in an enemy bunker. They're in the German bunker that's fucking full of high experiments and the dossiers and shit. And that's where we got to put the whole dossiers thing. We're gonna find the mm. dossiers about all the enhanced individuals and a couple of Wolfenstein yeah. ties. Yes, we we do a couple of those. You notice, Vinny noticed the food and water that is in this bunker. He notices like, oh, we could survive here a bit. So Vinny kind of takes a second, then he, he, we see him noticing and kind of thinking for a second before he finally tells um, uh, Deacon. It's like, hey, we got food and water down here. And um, uh, there's, 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 I, I, we kind of throw in a joke there, alluding to their, their past, maybe, of um, Deacon saying like, oh yeah, what's it look like? And Vinny goes like, Oh, it looks like anything better your dad your dad used to make back in the Bronx or whatever. Oh <laughs> god, <laughs> better than your dad made in the Bronx. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, and then and then oh, are dude. we are we gonna go with a flashback scene there? We're just gonna go back and <laughs> delve into the flashback scene. <laughs> I, I feel I feel like that if we were gonna do flashbacks, like get into their characters a little bit more and get to know, because up, up to this point, it's just like they're soldiers and they talk, and apparently they know each other. I feel like maybe yeah. now is the time to start hinting that there's a bit of there's a bit more going on there than just their soldier brotherhood friendship thing that they got going so we do we do a flashback to Vinny having dinner with um uh with um, with, De with the the deacon family with the deacon family <laughs> <laughs> he keeps referencing the Bronx and the other guy is like, dude, you're from Milwaukee. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense growing up in Mil Milwaukee. <laughs> no, the Bronx in New Milwaukee. It's a different place. <laughs> the, the Milwaukee Bronx. Not the Bronx and why the Bronx am I? <laughs> or where's am I in Michigan? I don't uh, uh, yeah, am I is Michigan actually I don't Whatever. know. Whatever. Bronx, know Bronx Milwaukee, it says. The Milwaukee Bronx <laughs> is from. Okay, so Vinny is having dinner with the with the Deacon family. Yeah. Uh, d does the Deacon family know about their relationship? Do they know about that, or is Vinny just like, oh, his friend, his buddy who comes by, and they go I into his room that... for hours at a time, <laughs> and they wrestle? I think I... <laughs> maybe maybe the Deacon family does know and is like is like supportive of it they're like the deacon family's a good family they they love their kid they don't care and although the times may be a lot different for a lot of people the deacon family doesn't care they love their son regardless and they like Vinny. they, they do like Vinny. so it kind of even more alludes to milwaukee is wisconsin by the way yes, oh, I, right. I, I realized that milwaukee wasn't a state after i had said am i but <laughs> I, I never even put two together. I was I was done. I was thinking about other things. <laughs> um, so, I would say that Deacon's family is like supportive of it, but I I think that I I want the relationship to be the, it struggles not based in like one of their unacceptance of who they are, but more about the relationship as a whole having issues. You know. Okay. So I think we, so I think that in we it shows Deacon's family they are accepting, but. Maybe there is like a, it's a little bit tiny hush hush with like other people, but we can take a look back at the relationship, see that they seemed like a happy couple, and as we come back, like they're like, oh, that was some good times. But then Deacon's like, 
good times in the past though Vinny and it's like a clear rift something has happened something has changed and although Vinny wants to remember the good times Deacon is remembering that was a time that was a long time ago yes we're different people now okay so n now what's happening in the bunker because we have to develop the idea of we have to we have to further de develop the idea that Vinny is the the antagonist here so is so is Deacon gonna start figuring things out because the one the one example that oh. I'm thinking of right now is uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane we have characters who yeah. are trapped in one bunker in one place what do we got what do we do here to keep the plot moving forward and in 10 Cloverfield Lane it was very much the protagonists uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's uh, thoughts about okay how do I get out of the situation and trying to read the other characters to understand the situation better so how are we going to so, do something like that here um at first the storm is over that berating of whatever um I would think that as that storm of artillery and bonds is like coming to an end they're actually having a good time talking you know they're having just a moment of conversation talking about life and stuff how it's kind of nice to have a break from all of the violence all of that stuff um and then maybe they sing a song from their past <laughs> but this is just a normal song it's just them kind of singing this is, this is two uh, two bros singing two bro, two bros having a nice little song you know just a song from the past but the lack of the lack of the noise from above interrupts the song for Deacon, not for Vinny, though. Yes. So, Deacon, kind of knowing that, he goes like, oh, the storm's done. And then Vinny's like, oh, oh it is? Well, we might want to, like, take a sec, but we don't want to go up there. And then Deacon's like, I'm going to try the door. And as he's trying the door, and he realizes, like, oh, shit, like, it's kind of, it's like, it's locked, like, it's not budging, like, there's something outside here it's revealed Vinny is like hearing sounds on his radio and you see him switch the radio off and kind of like play with it. He's taking the batteries out of that thing. And now he's like, um, uh, they're older radios. So it's harder to tell that when it's turned on or off though, it's like, it's like just an all black radio. Vinny's the radio guy. Deacon trusts him. So then Deacon's like, okay, we call base, let him know where we are. And he's like, okay. And then he's like, He's like, dude, I'm not getting anything down here. And he's like, what do you mean you're not getting anything? He's like, I think we're too deep. I can't contact base at all. Like, I'm getting nothing. So it's like a fucking... Now it's sort of like a panic for Deacon of like, well, we got to get out of here, whatever. And then he's like, well, we had we have like a patrol coming up soon. They should be able to spot like the wreckage and see what's going on here. And kind of Finney trying to control Deacon into staying while Deacon is fighting to try and find a way out of this bunker. Rather by exploring the bunker, by trying the door, for whatever it is, it's almost like a panic now if Deacon's got to get out there. Well, Vinny is trying to stay, and there's parts to that that Deacon's embracing, but Deacon is also, like, freaking out. He wants to leave. Okay. That that, that works. That, that, that That's a lot for me to try to write down, but that, that, that works a I lot. Know. I'm listening to the radio, but doesn't fully believe that Vinny is being honest about the radio not working. Mm -hmm. Not working. Okay. So then, at this point, do we go for another flashback, or do we keep following them into... Maybe Deacon is trying to, like... Vinny, De should, Deacon should try to test Vinny somehow. Deacon should try to, like... Figure, hey, like maybe, maybe let, let me see the radio. I, I, I can fix it, or... Uh, the, or does he go and try the try to open the door, or did? Uh... Yeah, he tried to open the door. So I think that he does sort of test Deacon, but Deacon's trying to bring up parts of the past, kind of like communicate with him. And at first, it's kind of like a fun letting the time fly sort of thing. But then Deacon is starting to notice the pattern, and this is where their past relationship actually kind of comes up where Deacon is starting to realize and we could do it through flashbacks or through whatever, this is like the same pattern that he showed of control that actually ended their last relationship. So that was a big thing for Vinny, is that Vinny was crazy controlling of Deacon. 
and he's starting deacon starting to lose that control again and he's starting it's starting to give him the same feeling okay i uh i, th I think i know how we do that i think i know how we do that okay we we have to flash back to them in basic training or something yeah so they go into basic training and they have to be in some kind of similar situation so Vinny is trying to exhibit control and make and because maybe for most of their lives it was just the two of them it was just it was just vegan Vinny and deacon mm. being the best friends and that's what led to their relationship but then as they go into basic training maybe they start to actually make friends or maybe Deacon starts to actually make friends. I'll say. Then Vinny Deacon starts to manipulate. Dude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he's a likable dude. He wants to be a good soldier. He's actually a nice person. And Vinny doesn't like that Deacon is starting to t t just, like, talk and be friends to other people. So he has mm -hmm. to... So maybe at that point, he would start... To, Vinny would start to display some kind of manipulative behavior and try to, like, yep. ruin the friendships and try to make Deacon look bad or make other people look bad to Deacon. And then... We would flash forward to then Deacon realizing, oh shit, this is happening here as well. So I think that when, maybe it's a specific, could even be a specific thing he says, something that reminds him of another thing he said back in the day that was very controlling manipulative. And then Deacon like takes a sec, kind of reveal in his face. And he's like, give me the, give me the radio. And then Vinny's like, what? And he's like, give me the radio. And Vinny's like, why do you need the radio? I already tried it. And he's like, let me try it then. And then it, fighting ensues that just trust is there. That they have a, And then they sing at each other. I forgot. This is still a musical, so they need to... <laughs> they need to anger sing at each other. Yes. I feel like at they this point, we, we... I don't know how... Are, are we at this point going to say that they're starting to go insane? They've been in the bunker for like an hour and a half at this point. They haven't been down there uh, that long. Well, <laughs> well the, the, there's like fluff conversation. There has to be jokes in there too. I forgot. Oh yeah, there and has other to... songs, because the the reveal of the um uh, of the manipulation and then him realizing that he wants the radio is like a, a big point in the story. That's like a turning point for the story, because that's when their conflict really ensues. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, I don't we got we just got a ton of filler in there. I don't know what we would fill it with. Oh god, yeah, and we still have to add a so we have to add a couple scenes. We still have to add the fucking uh, random scenes that are going to cause uh that are going to go to uh our cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the flashbacks. We show in the training. There's a couple of names that just get thrown around that are like really important for some reason, but nobody like recognizes the names. Okay, uh, should we use the name generator and just come up with a couple of random character names? Sure. Okay, I'll I'll do that real quick. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw. I, I'll, I gotta do generator. it. I gotta I gotta like show it on screen here. Gotcha. All right, I'm gonna bring up the random name generator. Yeah, okay, All right, I'll go. pick a name and then you say who they are in the Wolfenstein verse. Our Wolfenstein. Our Wolfenstein verse. All right. Okay, re refreshing and okay. There we go. The list of names is up. I don't know how long it will take for you with the delay. All right, so Sandra Howe. Sandra Howe. Or Howie. Sandra Sandra Howe. That makes sense. Sandra Howe. Uh, is it just Sandra Howe, or is it, is there another one? Just Sarah Sandra Howe for now. I'll give you another one later after that. All right. Sandra Howe was in basic training with them, and she was really good with a bow for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, it's World War Two. She's good with a bow. They're just gonna let her run in with a bow. <laughs> yeah, but they don't really explain why. It's just kind of like an off state. She's like, I'm Sandra. Or she just goes by Sandra, though. We don't do the full name because it's just a teaser. <laughs> it's just a teaser to the character that no one cares about or has heard of ever. <laughs> yeah, but she's part of the... She gets her own movie. She gets her own TV show after like 20 years. <laughs> she's her Hawkeye, I'm saying. But uh, <laughs> Sandra Howe is the bow girl that shows up. Um... And then we'll do one more tie to Cinematic Universe. Give me, randomize those names again, and I'll give you another randomize one. Randomize the name? All right, hold on. Another randomize. All right, hold on. Bring it up. Going to refresh, and... All right, there's the new batch. Oh, God. Uh, I, do you see one you like? I see one that I don't know if I love it or I hate it. 
Kenya Crouch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Kenya, what kind of... Kenya? <laughs> Ken, Kenya is a first name. There are people with the first name Kenya. Kenya Crouch. Um, no, because it's, it's a pun, right? Like, it, it sounds, sounds like a joke. It sounds like a Marvel character. Yeah, we're going to go with Oscar B Bourne. Oscar Bourne. <laughs> We're gonna tie Jason Bourne into this for no reason. Yeah, the Bourne, was... the Bourne movie. Man. This Jason... is Jason Bourne's great oh. grandfather, Oscar Bourne. Oh, I can't wait to have a great grandson named Jason one day. Yeah, he says that. <laughs> he, he says that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's Oscar Bourne. <laughs> also, meet a soldier named Oscar Bourne. Who is excited to one day have a great. <laughs> grandson named Jason. There he goes. He's so specific about it. He's like, you don't even have, do you even have kids? Do you have grandkids? No. So you, you know you're gonna have a great grandson named Jason? Oh, yeah. Okay, 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 Oscar. That fucking guy. Oscar born um, was Jason's little brother. Yeah, but this is World War II, though. This is World War II. It's so, be... okay. We have, we have one more character who I'm putting in this. Oh, God. Okay, one more character. Who is it? Uh, Do you want me to refresh again? Megan Toretto. Megan Toretto. The oh great, God. The great great the great grandmother of Dominic Toretto. Okay. And she shows up because she drifts like one of those carts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she drifts <laughs> jeeps around. Movie, no, way. she drifts she tanks. Drifts, she drifts she tanks drifts. around the battlefields. <laughs> she just World War Two tanks. Just Tokyo drifting around, is like circling the enemy. Like, we're not an army, we're a family. <laughs> <laughs> Who drifts <laughs> tanks around the battlefield and is excited to have a, gra a grandchild. A child named Dom. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, we just have all these awful lines. <laughs> Oh no, this is gonna be so bad. Yeah, she's drinking, she's drinking Coronas in World War Two. Yes, of course. <laughs> she for no for no reason her tank has like the the engine coming out the hood, coming out the front like the supercharger. Dude, just, in her tank crew, Ludacris is in her tank crew. <laughs> Tyrese Gibson is there for whatever reason. He's like, oh, I guess he's because he stuff. needs the money. That's why he's there. <laughs> You were in that paycheck, Tyrese. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so those that's that's our cinematic universe. Um Oh no. Oh fuck, we just gotta get through this, man. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get through this. Okay, so this is like uh we're about I think we're about at the halfway point here. I think we're about at the halfway yeah. point. Shit has to start hitting the fan. So they start hearing songs and singing and shit's getting crazy. And their singing escalates until a full-out fight. A sing fight? Dance battle? I don't know what... How are they, how are they yes, gonna... Yes, you said dance battle, so yes, they're dance battling. In their heads, they're dance battling. But in reality, they're just kicking the shit out of each other. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's Damn. kind of dark. <laughs> or do we go the other and way then, around? They think they're... They think that they're fighting, but they're just like dancing at each other. Just... And then we, um, uh, you, uh, the, the, the semi, not a really a big reveal, but in the middle of the battle, Vinny says, you know, I've, I do this because I still love you or whatever. And Deacon like takes a second and Deacon's like, this isn't the way you, you treat the people you love. And then... Vinny is like, yes, it is. And it's like, kind of like Vinny is trying to explain himself by saying his control has always been out of love and protection. He's trying to do what's right for him. And Deacon's like, that is not correct. That okay? is not love. That is, if you're doing that much to control the person that you love, then it's not really love. You're just like being a shitty person towards them. So Vinny almost stands his ground in his thing. And, um, uh, Deacon finally like stands up to him and says all that shit and he's like he's like we're done Vinny I thought we could be friends after this but no we can't I got to go and he's like give me the radio he finally gets the radio from him realizes the batteries are out and at this point that suspicion he already had was almost all but confirmed so like 
the stake was through the relationship. When he sees the battery's gone, it's like, I'm not even surprised. So he just puts his hands out. Vinny gives him the batteries. He puts it in. He calls for it. And he's like, hey, we need help. We, and he's like, we heard your unit go dark. We got someone right there on standby. <laughs> and then a huge explosion. Door opens. It's Vin Diesel as BJ Blast. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, that... It all has to tie into that. They have to get rescued by fucking BJ Blazkowicz. Which, by the way, Vin Diesel's playing BJ Blazkowicz. He's also playing Dom in the future versions. Um, and where the Fast and the Furious character's coming. And for no reason, he's in drag playing his own grandmother, Tank Driver. Yes, that is true. He is doing that, without a doubt. They get help from BJ Blas. <laughs> Tank's got neon lights under him. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the neon... It's got a spoiler... It's got fucking those, those like <laughs> stickers that you see race cars to put them put on oh them of like all the God. racing companies and shit like that. It has a Monster Energy sticker. <laughs> so, BJ opens up the door, and he's and then they're like, "How long are we down there?" And then he's like, four weeks or whatever." Like it just just does not seem accurate, but we'll say the time, whatever. And he's like, "Well, the Allies made any progress," and BJ's like. That's the thing where you two are down here. The Allies lost. And then they're like, what? And he's like, and we got one chance to get it, to bring to bring this war around. But we need to put a team together to do so. And, and, and is that where the movie ends with them teasing, teasing the, the Wolfenstein movie, basically? And then but Deacon says, I'm in. But Vinny stays out of this one. And Vinny's kind of betrayed. Um, after credit scene, so that that's the end. Is we're teasing the big war where they put together the Toretto family, the Boren family, Sandra Howe, who is just Hawkeye, uh, um, <laughs> BJ Blazkowicz and Deacon. Um, after credit scene, first one is um, they leave they they, they leave um, uh, Vinny in there, and Vinny goes over to the Germans and joins their side. And says, I got a secret about their best weapon, Deacon. <laughs> and then they're like, then it turns out he's got some big, he's got the kryptonite on Deacon. Oh, God. It's, <laughs> it's not been revealed or anything. For absolutely um, no reason. He's just like, I know his one weakness. God yeah. Damn it. And then, uh, what's the uh, what's the second after credit scene? Uh, 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 the second after credit scene? Okay, we gotta go back to fucking, what's her name? The uh, the lady with the bow. Sandra Howe. Sandra Howe, yeah. We, got, we gotta have, have a whole thing of her fighting all the Germans, but then, um, shit, I'm trying to think of some other movie we can tie this into that would go, uh, that would be ridiculous. I don't know enough about the movie. Uh, what uh, was that, uh, what was that weird, I think it was a J.J. Abrams produced World War II movie that got super weird and was in the Cloverfield universe? Am I making this up? I don't feel like I'm making this up. That sounds familiar. Abrams, hold on. J.J. Abrams, World War II, Overlord. Yeah, Overlord. Yeah, it started with Wyatt, Wyatt Russell. It, it, it was like a World War II horror movie where they find a whole shitload of secret Nazi experiments. For absolutely yeah. no reason, she goes in and and finds all the Overlord shit. Whatever happens in the movie, I didn't see it, but we're tying it this <laughs> into the universe for whatever reason. And Wyatt Russell's there, and he is looks like U.S. agent from Falcon <laughs> Winter Soldier. <laughs> And he's like, I need your help. <laughs> Cut the black. This is just and a then mess. Third after credit scene, it is the exact same scene from um, Age of Ultron where Thanos puts on the glove and says, I guess I'll have to do this myself. And we have no context to why that's in the movie at all. We haven't alluded to why Thanos is in this universe, but he does say that. Yeah, they just like, throw that the, scene in there the, for no it's reason. Verbatim, it's the exact same scene. We just cut it out of the end of Age of Ultron and put it at the end of our movie. Uh, Link to Inglorious Bastards. Brad Pitt just walks in and smacks the German head in the head. Yes, we add that in there too. That made that that works perfectly. We kill the oh, Nazis. Any other and then Tom Hanks comes out of the blue and says, "Where's Matt Damon?" So we can save Private Ryan. <laughs> he just Tell comes me. out of the blue and spoils saving Private Ryan. I haven't seen that one yet. Fuck you. <laughs> and then and then just a bunch of dudes show up. 
and it's the whole cast of Band of Brothers, and they go, what are we, some type of Band of Brothers? And then it just ends, and no more credits after that. That's the end of the movie, and it's really confusing. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, and I think that's, <laughs> oh my fucking god. That, that, that's perfect. There we go. We have our World War II movie Wolfenstein oh. cinematic universe. <laughs> That is not it's going to make got, any fucking sense. It has three Vin Diesels. Marvel, it's got... <laughs> How many Vin Diesels does your cinematic universe have? Not as many as ours. Oh, four <laughs> Vin more... Diesels. Riddick's in there, too. I don't know where, but he is. Oh, you have to find him. Five. He was in Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> yeah, he was. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and fucking the Age of Ultron, so it's Marvel, too, so Groot. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh okay, so there's six Vin Diesels. The Vin Diesel cinematic universe. Uh, also, just, okay, Triple X snowboards in at one point. And then um, the, uh, the last witch hunter shows up and says, There's a witch nearby, and then leaves. This is the Vin Diesel multiverse. Thank you, Favin. The Vin Diesel verse. <laughs> the Diesel has been. The Diesel verse has been created. And this is their premiere movie. And their premiere movie has almost nothing to do with Vin Diesel, actually. But it is the Vin Diesel first film. Oh, the VD. The VDV? That sounds like an STD. VD is is short for venereal disease, which is another word for STD. We're we're working with a VD verse. We're going all out with the VDs here. You want... Hey, you come to movies hoping for VDs? You come to the right movies. Also, the beginning of our movie is it's produced and has like a shit ton of production companies on it. Like, there's like twelve different production company logos at the beginning. You, you like, don't you watch a movie. Will say, <laughs> why is there so many production companies? Why did Disney and Sony and Mar and fucking <laughs> Warner Brothers and Universal and MGM? <laughs> why do they, all of them work on this? They're like, well, with Sony was a part of it because we needed rights to the characters. Like Spider Man's in this movie. They're like, who? No, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is in this movie. <laughs> what are you, stupid? <laughs> oh, shit. The, that's the episode name? The v, oh, fuck. The VD-verse. Oh, oh are you really? Oh, okay, I think that's as so good a place as I need to call it. We took an actually kind of interesting story about a claustrophobic situation between two lovers during World War II. We genuinely could have won an Oscar with that. And now it's about Vin Diesel. The opening credits are actually the first 25 minutes of the movie. Actually, you're wrong. It's the first 45 minutes of the movie. Is God, aim credits. higher, Favin. Aim higher. This movie is six hours long. Like, <laughs> there's intermission. There's filler. There's commercials in the middle of it. There's like we, a Toyota commercial in the middle put, of the movie. We put an entire other movie in the middle of our movie. We got the rights to a movie that was out at World War II, and we just played that thing in its entirety in the middle. Yep. Oh god. And there's like a ton of just two minute scenes from The Last Witch Hunter just spliced in there. <laughs> uh because Vin Diesel's such a heavy part in this movie. He actually produced most of it. So I will say what ended up happening is this idea that we had of the two lovers and this is what we pitched to uh Warner Brothers. Uh we didn't realize Vin Diesel was standing outside the door. He came in and said, We're making this movie and they said, Okay, Vin, go ahead. And then me and Colin were fired, and this is the movie Vin Diesel has made. <laughs> the, the, yeah, that, that's the true story behind this movie, which is also a is true the story. Last, the last witch hunter is, in fact, Vin Diesel. It's not Nick Cage. Um, Nick Cage was the Sorcerer's Apprentice. <laughs> get, get it right, which is Adam. awesome in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, all right. I think we got to call it there. My throat hurts from yes, laughing and smiling too much. Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right all right we're gonna we're gonna go into a post show so we're gonna st- stop streaming here but we're gonna have a post show recorded for all of our patreon subscribers thank y'all very much for watching this absolute train wreck yes <laughs> all right we, we love all of you have a good night everyone <laughs> bye-bye, bye-bye.